David Knight and Joe Biggs are in Virginia, where there is a giant anti-gun, anti-self-defense feeding frenzy going on on the heels of the tragic live television shooting yesterday. We now have two dead uh, TV station members and, of course, the shooter, who is an Obama bot, got in trouble for wearing Obama pins during election coverage, uh, basically got in fights with everybody. His own manifesto says black people didn't like him, white people didn't like him, women didn't like him. A spoiled brat, clearly mentally ill, and uh, now we're getting reports that he was under some type of uh, mental treatment. So we're burrowing in right now. Was he on medication? Obviously, being under psychiatric care, being under counseling, it, it goes to say normally you are on some type of medication. That's what most psychologists and psychiatrists have become is basically pill dispensers. Well, psychiatrists always have been, but more and more counselors. And there are some good counselors out there. I'm not demonizing their entire profession, but more and more it's a political tool of oppression, clearly, and it's been that way in many other countries around the world. I kept saying yesterday, at nauseum, and I'm not bragging, I'm just saying we know what we're talking about. No need to go back and play the clips. I probably said it 50 times that this was tied to Charleston in South Carolina. And sure enough, he said that he did it because of the Charleston shooter, that that's what pushed him over the edge because nine black people were killed. And so this is fundamentally the big fat seeds of race war in this country because now if some other unstable white person strikes back and then some other unstable black person strikes back, this could really start to unravel. And that's why the system wants the collapse that's coming to this country to be racial in nature as a distraction to scapegoat different groups against each other. That's why Europe is allowing and, and putting people on welfare the massive unfettered flood of illegals from the Middle East, Africa, Asia, you name it, into Europe and then giving them massive welfare to incentivize it no matter how destructive it is, no matter how many cities get lit on fire, because under the economic collapse, whoever is middle class and left will end up siding with the government in the end who will come in as the saviors to protect the public. And I've got not one but two articles today. Paul Joseph Watson uh, wrote an article for Infowars.com. He's joining us in 30 minutes. Steve Quell's coming on. Again, our reporters will join us from Virginia at the start of the next hour. France prepares for mass unrest, radicalized immigrants taking over cities. And this is a Ministry of Defense report from France. Because it's the military's job to assess threats. They're compartmentalized. They're not part of the takeover. They're just going to respond when things break down. And they say RPGs and anti-aircraft missiles have been smuggled in from Libya and Syria. Oh, oh, sorry. I probably said a thousand times in the last four years since Libya that you will then hear they're going to shoot down jetliners with the missiles. But never a discussion of why they got them. They're now getting everybody ready. For the jihadis, like the guy that tried to attack on the train last Friday, to have Stinger missiles, RPGs, and AK-47s that the police are starting to find all over the country. So you see how that works. Not hard to predict this stuff. Other people don't seem to be able to, which just shows how dumb most pundits and analysts are. Uh, and then this dovetails with it. Fort Bragg troops trained for domestic emergency. This exercise is about the home front. And that is uh, from ABC News 11. So there you go. They're now going mainstream with it, which means they're getting close. They're thinking about pulling the trigger. Welcome, my friends. Welcome and thank you so much for joining us on this live Thursday worldwide transmission, the 27th day of August, 2015. I'm your host, Alex Jones. We have Steve Quell joining us uh, for an hour and a half at the uh, middle way uh, of the transmission today at 1230 noon central. We have our reporters from the site of the tragic shooting yesterday in a rural area two hours away from major airports in Virginia where this tragic event uh, with the shooting live on television took place. 
And Paul Joseph Watson joins us from London to break down a report he's written for Infowars.com. France prepares for mass unrest, radicalized immigrants taking over cities. That's a Army Ministry of Defense report released to the media. Also, there's video of this out of North Carolina. We're going to be playing that. ABC 11 uh, in a Max Slavo uh, article at Infowars.com. Fort Bragg troops train for domestic emergency. This exercise is about the home front, ostensibly. And on the surface, they're trained to help out with things like natural disasters, floods, and hurricanes. But this is regular Army. They're gearing up for the collapse, ladies and gentlemen. I want to be clear, whenever we warn of the lurch into the police state, the lurch into globalism, federalism, the lurch into centralization, we're not saying it's imminent where it's going to happen overnight or troops trying to stabilize a burning city. We're not trying to say they're the enemy. The globalists have created the climate where you're going to beg and I'm going to beg for the big red one to come down the street in armored vehicles. And we're trying to stop the globalist from maneuvering us into this position. They're running around in newspapers, I mean every couple days around the country, because they know national media has no respect with locals, but local media still has some, though it's lost a lot of credibility in the big national studies. There's a new one out today. And they're running stories like this one. We actually got the newspaper itself, the Inlander, the major newspaper for Spokane and four counties daring to tread why Spokane's Republican sheriff says we should be scared of homegrown extremists and the fanatical fringe of the Tea Party. And he's a microcosm of what they're gearing up for. And this all broke last year again when he had an, these armored vehicles being delivered and they were at Walmart saying they're for the Tea Party, they're for the Constitutionalist. So we ran the video and said this is wrong. Drudge and others picked it up. World and Daily picked it up. The story went viral. And he first came out and said, we're liars. It's not for us. Then we said, no, you're a liar. So he said, Alex Jones and InfoWars has threatened to kill me. When it was comments on the site, which anybody could do. I mean, I could go on the Inlander and put comments and then say they said it. I mean, it, it's just very bizarre. And, and he keeps warning of something's about to happen I really see this as a prime false flag zone. That's what my spider sense, common sense tells me. Now, by exposing it, it may not happen, but I think the sheriff's a really, really bad person from everything he's done. He speaks with a fork and tongue, and I think he's playing people. And I'm, I may just go to a county nearby and not even go into his jurisdiction and call for peace when I go out there and see if he'll come to the county line because I don't even know if it's safe to even get within his jurisdiction with, with the history of his deputies, the things he's been involved in, bizarre deaths. Uh, this is a pretty bad guy. The Southern Poverty Law Center might have something on him. I'm not sure. I'm speculating there. But this is a microcosm, a canary in the coal mine with things like this going on. And they're looking for provocations in different zones around the country to be trigger events to paint the liberty movement as terroristic when they start the Soros race war that we're battling to stop. And, and, and look, we know our stuff. You could call it criminology, modus operandi, studying human behaviorism. I've been on air 20 plus years, almost 21. I've been immersed in this sometimes 18 hours a day. I'll be honest, the last couple of years, I can't do more than 10 hours a day. I, I just, it's too much. I'm not as immersed as I used to be. It's just because every data point opens up a whole other data set for me. And it just, I actually know too much now. And I just can't handle it. Back when I was trying to figure stuff out, it was kind of fun to learn stuff. Now it's just horrific. I mean, I'll be honest. Uh, but I got up here and I said, this guy will end up being mentally ill. He'll end up being on psychotropics. Uh, that's starting to come out. But I said, he did this probably because of Charleston and the nine innocent black people that were killed by the white guy hopped up on drugs again, prescription drugs. I mean, it's not hard to make these connections. People are going, yeah, common sense. Well, none of the other media did it. And now his manifesto's out, and it turns out that he's basically a Black Lives Matter Obama drone. And so David Knight made the point to me on the phone this morning that this is Obama's first drone strike domestically.
because this is one of his drones out attacking. And when you get all this race war promotion on MSNBC and CNN and the leg the groups legitimizing, saying, let's go out, let's attack the white people. They're the cause of all the problems. You're going to have blowback to the knockout game and the looting and the robbing and the rest of it when unstable white people start going out and killing black people, and then black people are going to respond to that. It's a chain reaction. But sure enough, that's now come out. After shooting alleged gunman details grievances and suicide note, or what you call his manifesto, revenge race murderer, bitter black reporter who gunned down white ex-colleagues, lived on air and posted the video online, blames Charleston shootings and anti-gay harassment in manifesto of why he did it. Continuing, he was the human tape recorder, how TV murderer was criticized by boss for appalling journalistic standards and reprimanded for wearing an Obama badge to report on elections. Continuing, after shooting, alleged gunman detailed grievances. Again, I mentioned that. I want to go over some of that. U.S. shooting video shocks Internet in New Frontier. It's not New Frontier. What do you think military videos are? And, of course, he's dead now. But that hasn't stopped Hillary Clinton and others from coming out and saying they blame the Second Amendment. Quote, we have to do something about gun violence in America. Well, we have, Hillary. That's why overall gun crime is down 51 to 52% since 1992. And Professor Lott says, I'm wrong looking at the numbers. Fox News, he says, is wrong. He says it's 61. Well, we had a statistician go over the Justice Department numbers first. It was 51. Then Fox News did their own analysis, said 51. Lott says 61. Whatever. They admit, even in the L.A. Times, that gun crime is way down, but perception is it's way up. This is the fraud, just like the perception is if you go swimming in the Atlantic or Pacific Ocean, great white sharks are going to eat you. You've got a better chance of being mugged by a leprechaun than you do being attacked by a great white shark. But again, I, I always use that analogy because it's just so ridiculous. Yeah, there's the L.A. Times. Gun crime plunged, but Americans think it's up, study says. And that's from two years ago. That's when they released the, the, the 20 years of numbers. And I'm just putting that up on screen because I get these emails and see comments. Oh, he just makes all that up. Listen, I make mistakes here and there. And when we find out we make mistakes, we correct them. But we're very accurate. And we know what we're talking about, and we immerse ourselves in the information. And the fact is, there is not an epidemic of gun violence. Most of the people being killed are criminals breaking in people's houses or trying to carjack or people shooting at the police or other gangs shooting each other. Go look at the numbers. Most crime is criminals killing each other or citizens fighting back in justified shootings or police shooting people in justified shootings. And statistically, there are some bad cops out there, and they're trying to make them really bad with their training. But still, you, you count the number of People cops kill every year. It's a very small part of the overall issue. And I'm only saying that because it's not the biggest problem there is. George Soros says it is. It's not. It's part of causing a civil war in this country where they've got these federally controlled police running around saying, I'm a terrorist that wants dead cops. When all this stuff starts, folks, they're going to blame the liberty movement. We've got to stop it. Now, let's go to this clip of Donald Trump getting it right. That's why he's so popular. Now, even the establishment people are saying you know, he has a chance to win. He said that it, mental health should be the focus, and he's a strong Second Amendment supporter. Here it is. This isn't a gun problem. This is a mental problem. And, you know, you have cases where, like, had the, had the veterans, had the guys that were shot recently, uh, had they, if they had weapons, they might have been able to save themselves. They would have been able. They were all heroes. They were all... A tremendous military men, and they had absolutely no defense. And frankly, uh, you know, a case like this, he snuck up on him, whether it was a gun or a knife or whatever it would have been, it would have been something. But, you know, you're not going to get rid of all guns. So I know one thing, if you tried to do it, the bad guys would have them. 
to use an expression, and the good folks would abide by the law. There'd be a 